Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Roddy! I'm Marty. Are you guys ready for another solid episode of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney where Marty does not voice any characters? Mm, this court fun. is sexist! There are no women here! <laughs> no, that's no. not how that works. We're still cross-examining Valid Gregory. You might as well be a woman with that hair. So are you saying men can't have long hair too? I have rarely <laughs> seen a guy though with it. Who can pull it off, especially. Yeah, you either look like a bum or you look great. <laughs> there's no in between. <laughs> there's no in between. Bum? Or great. No, uh, my my sword fighting instructor had really long hair. He'd like wear it in a ponytail. Oh, there's a guy at um where I work. He's like one of the higher ups. He's okay. like Native American, and he has oh, like sweet. he's got like this really long like silver ponytail. It's oh, that's sick. it's awesome. He that's looks super so cool. cool. <laughs> I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11:20 p.m. Maybe you need silver hair then, because that was the same thing with my sword instructor. He had like <laughs> he has like silver hair. That, it helps. 11.20 p.m. Can you prove that's when you arrived? Totally. Alas, such a feat may be beyond even the great Valent. For there was no one in that room but Magnify, and he was departed after a fashion. I have here defendant Zag Grammary's sworn deposition. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. It was ten minutes before I left the room, and the victim was still alive. The time indicated by this letter to Zack was 11.05 p.m. Exactly. Which means the witness could not have entered that room before 11.15. Because his partner was still in the middle of his crime. I see someone did their arithmetic homework. You see, the defendant himself has corroborated the witness's testimony. Hmm. Does that all make sense? Not a problem, there's a contradiction. Oh yeah, because if we push too hard at times when there's nothing there, then it'll be a penalty. I'm really mad that this is the case that Phoenix Wright... That's why he's no longer an attorney. <laughs> this is like annoying. To unless, me. unless you cause a time paradox. It's That'd like, be cool. Surprise! All the whole apologist has never actually happened. I would be actually really happy with that, to be honest. <laughs> Marty hates a No, I'm trying to think of like any characters that I'm like, oh, I would really be mad if they didn't actually exist in this game. Lamehua. I would be mad if Lamehua and if um, Vera maybe were like. Both girls. They're both girls. That's, okay. No, that's fine. I, I get that I don't because care about Walkie, he was really mean and annoying. Walkie was and a rude. jerk. It was annoying. Elita Tiala was a gold digger and she was terrible. Yeah. Oh, oh also she's like a middle schooler right now at this time. <laughs> she was like twenty <laughs> or twenty. Yeah, she's like twenty or twenty. And this was seven years ago, so she's like in high school. She's thirteen. So yeah. Anyhow, I guess we'll say not a problem for now. I don't see any problem with that testimony. Yeah, whatever. If you say so. Let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical thing of all... Is silence? ...is the truth. Oh, okay. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. You walk in on a murder, and the first thing you do is shoot the clown? Boom! The disciple does what the disciple must. My mentor's request, without reason, had caused me for... had caused for me a surfeit of sorrow. For what would I, Valent, be now without him? May the soul of Magnify the Great find greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled that lonely trigger. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments, air attorney. May I remind you that a baseless, baseless remarks will earn penalties. Proceed with that in mind. Yes, your honor. What a pain this is turning out to be. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. Did the doctor say anything concerning the cause of death? Why yes, I believe he screamed, MY GOD, HE'S BEEN SHOT IN THE HEAD! It doesn't take a doctor to notice that, I believe I would have said the same thing. And I would have penned the requiem that arose in my soul at that horrid sight. Whatever happened to good old fashioned investigation? In any case, I believe this is all nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments, air attorney. <laughs> how, how is it like every prosecutor in existence is like getting started at like 17 or 18? Francis, get got started at 13, you peons. <laughs> okay, well, I mean in this country, not in like Germany. Edruff got started at like 19. That's pretty 
pretty young. That is really young. Like, but he also was taught by Von Karp. Okay, but most people <laughs> fresh out of high school can't get like that kind of a job. Most people oh, yeah. are like, I'm washing but dishes. But again, Edgeworth is not most people. Edgeworth is very driven. <laughs> he's a workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> he does... They're always hiring a big boy. <laughs> They're always hiring in the mail room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people could climb the ranks. But yeah, like Mike and takes, Sully. But it takes a while. Like, how old do you Not think Mike... Not if Von Karma's there to accelerate how, how old do you think Mike and Sully are, then, in the first movie? Late 20s? You think? You think it took them only, like, four years to climb the ranks? They were a super team serving soup. Okay. <laughs> but, like... I don't know. It takes a while, I think. We're not going to get for this testimony. No, it's fine. He was quite clear about the time of death. 1110. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death, true. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Magic revels in making the complex appear simple, but reality is the opposite. This dude paid off the doctor. He was like, Doc, this happened at... 10 at, the, at, at 11 10 he's like shoving like two 20s in his face <laughs> all it takes is two 20s to bribe someone not to out you as a murderer <laughs> the doctor's like sweet i can go doctors get a lot of money you know the two 20s that's all it takes <laughs> sweet never... i could go to disney and buy four cokes for this price <laughs> <laughs> you are never gonna let Coke is like seven or ten dollars at Disney. It's seven dollars. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> what appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person has done their arithmetic homework. The point here is the IV the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Okay, but that happened after. It's not like one of the um great magicians like took a picture right after the like murder is like oh this is so going on my wall <laughs> <laughs> this belongs on my fridge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> recall that we heard earlier about the victim magnify grammary's schedule every night at 11 magnify took an iv drip for 30 minutes i can see the iv bag right there yes now look a little closer follow the tube down from the bag to the end mm. ah uh, the needle's been removed Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was shot. Uh -huh. That would seem to be the case. When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. Wait. Ah! You could just measure the remaining IV liquid. Um. Precisely. What? That doesn't work. I've had an IV before. An IV is, like, taped onto your arm. There is the... No. Go to the crime photo. There's tape on the needle. See? Oh. That would have been a ridiculous blow to the forehead. I think It was like somebody... a shotgun. <laughs> I think that the it, IV it's might a pretty have been big removed. gun. It is a biggish gun, but it's not like a revolver. It's like a gun. Also, IV does isn't like stuck in your arm. It's like barely pricks it. Yeah, but okay, okay. But when you have an IV, it's like it's there. You're not just gonna be able to be like. Rip. If he got shot in the forehead, it would probably be like, his body would like jerk back and yeah, his but arms would I move. Don't, I don't think that would happen. I've had an IV. Also, when I when I had it. Well, I, maybe whatever doofus babusa boofus put it on his arm <laughs> didn't. Babusa <laughs> Whatever doofus mcboofus put it on his arm didn't tape it properly. Maybe. Well, How many I times have when, I had like? When I had an IV, I I was uh did wisdom teeth. So I had, like, the laughing gas. Yeah, and I yeah. remember, like, trying to violently move my arm because I was like, this is weird. What is this thing? And the doctor was like, okay, put down your arm. It's fine. Like, I just want to note that, like, a third of the video is over. And we are still not even, like, halfway through the first testimony. It's fine. No, it's not. It's fine. We're talking about wisdom teeth. And I no, need... it's not. It has to relate with the case. Wisdom teeth does not. We're moving on. The IV liquid functions for our purposes as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. From the amount remaining in the bag, it was determined that the IV had stopped 10 minutes after the administration began. So let us know in the comments down below, do you like us when we have our random rants? Or are you just like- If they're gosh. entertaining, sure, but you ranting about IVs and wisdom teeth was not very entertaining, okay, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Me violently moving my arm like, IV! That nobody can see! <laughs> well, yeah, but you can picture it in your head. And so it was, when I, Valent, entered that room. Ten minutes had passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. Hmm. 
well, Mr. Wright? Hmm, did that seem important? Very important. Ten minutes Not after, important. probably important. Just, just go with it. Well, seeing as how it is the biggest clue we have to the time of death, I'd say it's very important. Hmm, agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine the time. Behold the power of arithmetic. Very well. The witness will add this detail to yeah. his testimony. Sometimes the most magical fiend of all is the truth. The water of life springs not eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. What? Also, I pray that our bracelet starts moving and then we have to, like... We don't have a bracelet. I pray that um, Mia comes to Phoenix's mind and is like... For who? <laughs> not for the phaser here. <laughs> no, but he... Remember when, oh, oh, when Mia just dies? In, oh, like, just in be his like, mind. Him, like, whoa, that's pretty weird. But, like, Mia, he got closure at the end of... Three, five. Mia's like, I can't teach you anymore. Well, maybe, like... Maybe she's like, oh, change my mind. You're oh my sucking. gosh, you suck! <laughs> Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When first I entered that room, the stench of gunpowder assailed me. Next, the mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then his left arm did I spy a rose, drooping and wilted. It's form, the discarded IV needle. Knocked from the vein by the force of the shot, luckily for you. If that IV had not been there, why, you might be a suspect. Indubitably so. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Your lucky color? Indeed. Even today I wear it proudly upon my suspect self. For it always, without fail, brings me luck. Why, when Zack and Valid won their first Magician's Grand Prix, much like Max Galactica did, yes, the very one held by the Association of International Magicians, I was adorned in this attire then, too, and our trophy, a bust. Ah, what a day it was. It's like the circus all over again. It is like the circus. Ah, uh, this is one trip down memory lane no one needs. My lucky color, yes indeed, and that IV too. I say, I think it was twas hued especially for me, Valent. Hmm, that does seem to be the case indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, any thoughts on this testimony? Valent sure looks happy with himself. Okay, how about this lucky color testimony? <laughs> Not uh, a problem! That's, how would that be a problem? <laughs> I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so, let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical fiend of all... Is stupidity. Is the truth. <laughs> okay, uh, my theory is that he was the one who removed the IV. Oh. Like, he just removed it and he's like, this happened. But if he didn't get in sense. until... 11.20, then it would have been a call. It, it was pulled out at 11.20 when Valent was in the room. <laughs> no, but the doctor wouldn't have noticed. He would have just been like, whatever. No, but the, the IV liquid remaining in the bag wouldn't Maybe. match up. Well, it was 10 minutes after it, w after it was administered was when it was removed. Yes. If that's the case, that's 11.10 and the dude was still there. Maybe they were talking and he's like, oh my boy. I, I don't know how the magician sounds. Oh my boy, can you remove my IV? It's so painful. And he's like, oh, sure. IV is not painful. IVs are painful. No, they're not. You don't even feel it. I didn't feel it because I was on drugs, but like, I don't know. Okay, he's in the hospital with a malignant tumor. He's probably on drugs. Yeah, okay, probably. And the one in the room at that time was my partner, not me. <sighs> he stole the drugs. Aha. Uh -huh. You enter that hospital room at 11.20 p.m. The time given by the defendant, Zach Grammery, was 11.05 p.m. You didn't run into him at the hospital that night? Hmm. This is why I never perform with amateurs, you see. Huh? Picture me, if you will, the nighttime hospital. Oh, picture, if you will, the nighttime hospital. Outside, only the pale light of the moon. If two dressed as we were to meet in such circumstances, I dare say that would ruin the mood completely. The moon isn't in question here. I believe the witness is saying that they didn't meet, yeah. Well, if that's the case, if he's not wearing the thing he was wearing now, how would he be lucky if he didn't wear... Like... No, he was. He just didn't see... He, he just did a non sequitur basically. Oh, okay. For what is magic if not the study of beauty? Us meeting was not only out of the question, it was an impossibility. For what is magic if not the study of how to make absolutely no sense at all? That said, was there a contradiction in there? I mean, there could be. I don't know. Might be safe state. I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so. 
Let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical feat of all... You don't have to say this every time. ...is repetition. An alibi over a matter of minutes. Precise is right. Hmm, and pressing with impunity will earn me a nice penalty, too. Better focus on one thing, this time of death. I think all of them give us new statements, I bet. No, most of them just over it, like, Um, that's, like, suspicious. Like, how, what is suspicious? Uh, penalty. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's see if this one is a problem, though. It certainly sounds like your lucky colors brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Valent, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor, the witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. What? Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Baseless accusations will be duly penalized. Oh, oh we know! We I, know. I do hope this latest accusation is well-based. Don't worry, I've got you all your bases right here. Uh, Very well, let's hear the defense's claim. Where is your evidence that contradicts what Mr. Valent has told us? I don't know. So he was wearing yellow? So his lucky color... Is yellow. So he was wearing it, and he's like, oh, it must have been my lucky color that, uh, ha, ha, that, brought, that brought me, me luck? good luck. Is it because the gun is yellow? Hmm, nope. pity. That didn't do it for me, as the kids are fond of saying nowadays, do it. <laughs> do it. Perhaps you can explain it in such a way that it would. Well, I don't know whether it's the sort of evidence to do it for anyone, but... Do yourself a favor and stop flailing around for excuses. Before you do yourself in. And do try to straighten your spine. All that bending over is bad for your posture. I've got something that should make you sit up straight. A penalty. <laughs> Darn, I was so close on that one. Now that we're all upstanding citizens again, let's get back to the testimony. <laughs> no, we're not letting you say that again. Okay, let's look at everything. Okay. Crime photo. Wowzers. Cool. Nothing's really yellow in that photo. Except for the ba the bandage that the IV has. That's orange. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Next. <laughs> or like peach. Autopsy report. No. In a manila envelope. No. Mm -mm. No. No. That was the one thing I thought. Nope. No. <laughs> My attorney's it, badge is kind of yellow. <laughs> is it the attorney's badge? That'd be no, so it's funny. not. Okay, can we present um, profiles? No. Oh no! It's probably it's just think about it. Just it's think about it. Probably something in the crime photo. The, so Valance said, like, oh yes, me and the IV. It's our lucky colors. They brought me good luck. It's like, oh, okay. That's pretty weird. Is it because IV and its colors brought me good luck? The IV is green. Yeah. The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. The photo of the crime scene? All this talk of color has me yearning for black and white, clear-cut simplicity. Same. Tell us, Air Wright, just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure. And I assure you, it's quite simple. But I can't promise anything in black and white. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. I missed this music. We've already heard this before in this. I know, <laughs> but I but I missed this. What in this photo contradicts the witness's testimony? It's perfectly clear. Hank. <laughs> no. <laughs> Contrary to Mr. Wright's promises, this seems pretty black and white to me. Agreed. Um, how's that? You're wrong. That black and white enough for you? You're wrong, boy. Ugh, thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> thank you, sir. May I have some more? His lucky color is the color of his clothes, right? What contradicts that? This would be really hard if, like, he was wearing any more of, like, that crayon color. You know how that crayon color is, like, a greenish yellow? Then it's, like, no. they're pretty similar. Remember that? No. No. It's, like, a greenish yellow color. That terrible color of a crayon that nobody likes to use. Oh, yeah. That's not a yellow crayon, though. Oh, okay. Well, if it was any closer to that color, that's it's what like, I was it's saying. It's like Barf Swamp Green, which is one of the worst. <laughs> barf Swamp Green. My favorite it's color. It's the color of Shrek Swamp after he barfs in it. Does he barf? It's Shrek. There's poop and barf all the time. Okay, well, I've never <laughs> seen Shrek, so... Well, at least come the third movie, from oh, what okay. I've heard. Valent Grammary, let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow, yes? 
kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yes. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Right? Yes. Yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in fact. Take another look at the photo of the crime scene. Wh what's this? Confusion, doubt. Tell us, what do your elderly, elderly eyes spy? Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Valent. Look at the IV bag. Ack! Wh what is this? What foul ma magic? It would be hard to call the IV liquid yellow, and I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. Ah, uh, uh, Ala, Alakaz, Alakaz, no! What the heck? <laughs> he wasn't kidding when he said he had doves up his sleeve. <laughs> order, order, order! What does this mean? This, this is some kind of mistake. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin, your witness's mistake. The greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Valent Grammary, as you reminded us several times, your lucky color is yellow, but the IV is clearly not... Well, well... This contradiction can mean only one thing. Your, uh, your lucky color is green! <laughs> and to think, you almost had me. I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Something you'd like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. <laughs> yes, a contradiction. One that I will be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. How do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree, at a glance, the ivy liquid does appear a sort of greenish yellow. It's, it's green. There's barely, there's like no yellow in that. But I assure you, the liquid itself is quite yellow. Yellow liquid? How can you say that? As far as I can tell from this photo, it's green. Yes, but what color is the IV bag itself? The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a... I want to say light blue? Precisely. Figured it out yet? Put a yellow liquid in a blue bag and... You get green. This, incidentally, is the liquid's true color. I see. Your explanation does have the ring of truth yeah, to it. Yeah, but no person would just look at it and be like, boom. Yeah. As I thought, there's no substitute for experience, Prosecutor Gavin. What? You may tell a good tale, but you've just proven something rather grave. For you, that is. G grave The liquid in the IV is yellow, yes. But how did this witness know that? It's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it, didn't you? Uh, ugh. Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. At the scene of the crime, the IV liquid appears to be green. So let me ask, how did the witness know the IV liquid was actually yellow? Oh, because OMG! <laughs> yeah! Order, order, order! Mr. Wright, you will explain this at once. The witness clearly knew the color of the li IV liquid. So I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness, Valent Grammary, has testified that the IV liquid was yellow because it looked yellow. He'd seen it before. He knew the IV liquid's color. Um, it didn't look yellow. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll get rule that, that one, one out. out of the way. There was a reason the IV liquid looked yellow to the witness. I bet. Um, uh, Mr. Wright, that I bet at the end there, it worries me. Am I right in the assumption that you hope there's a reason? Not no? Uh, perhaps, uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but allow me to crush that hope as gentle and gentlemanly as I can. One more chance, please. <sighs> I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington um, loves large bananas. <laughs> um... He knew the IV liquid's color? What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I, I think both of these work. Both actually. of these work? Okay, because I was like, both of those are like the same thing, essentially. From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witness knew that the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before. But not inside the blue bag we see in the photo. He saw the liquid by itself in a clear, colorless bag. 
I suppose he would have had to, but I'm still not sure as to what the, all this means. Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, Your Honor. I'm afraid I find nothing. So what if he knew the Ivy Liquid's color? Leaving, <laughs> leave the getting excited over absolutely nothing to our teeny bopper fans, yeah. The IV liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30 minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, there's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. W w wait I know! An hourglass uses sand, but an IV bag uses liquid. I'm right, right? As much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body. At which point, like magic, it disappears. However, what if the amount of IV liquid had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Let me get this straight, Air Right. You're saying the witness watered down the victim's IV bag? Not with water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. No, wait, wait, I said wait! How might an amateur such as myself essay to perform such a task? How the heck did this guy get off the hook? I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. I'm afraid there's quite a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? He's a magician. Hmm, he has a point, amateurs. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Judge! Wait, are we- you really want to go for He's a magician! He magicked it into the bag! Okay, you know what? <laughs> you know what? This is the guy who literally, he freaked out and then two bunnies and two doves popped out of his sleeves. You can't just magically teleport things into the IV bag. I'm not saying teleport, I'm saying he's a magician. He would have found a way to put the- liquid into the IV bag. That sounds like a Professor Layton puzzle. I at least would have had some difficulty pouring IV liquid into that bag. Isn't- doesn't it just like seal off at the top? Not like Ziploc, but like- <laughs> It's maybe. just a Ziploc bag. Just a Ziploc <laughs> bag. Shh. You don't need to be an expert to see the look on the witness's face. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. I tire of these fairy tales lacking evidence. Actually- Well, Mr. Wright, any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? What? Yeah, yeah, he would want to have the more liquid, I think. Wouldn't- I- at first I was like, wouldn't he want less liquid to show that it happened a while back? Hmm. No, he wants more liquid in the bag to be like, oh, because there's a lot of liquid left in the bag, it must he have come out right. at ten minutes ago. Val and Grammary, I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in a life of crime. Might I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Magic relies on props, and props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the prop was... That extra syringe. My attorney's badge. I'm afraid Mr. Wright is attempting to water down this case. Urgh. Why add water when you could add a penalty? Uh, Why indeed? That didn't go so well. I wonder if there was something at the scene. Something he could have used to add more IV liquid. Once again, Mr. Wright, if you would be so kind. It was the small syringe. The victim's syringe? It's the perfect prop for the magically increasing IV trick. And easy enough for an amateur to use. What, what kind of evidence is that? The syringe was clean, not a trace of liquid in it. Like, wash it out! And don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin? What? what? The victim had the syringe to administer his in insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside. Well, Valent Grammary, as you pointed out yourself, the IV liquid makes the perfect clock. One that you could manipulate at will. Alec. Alec Once again, how the heck did this guy get off the hook? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I do believe, well, with this being his first, that the burden of this trial has been a bit too much to bear for Prosecutor Gavin. Because he didn't win? <laughs> I'm afraid that while there is a doubt is there is a doubt as to the amount of IV liquid in that bag, the time of death cannot be proven. 
And that brings our trial to a close for today. Well, maybe I can squeeze an extra day out of this. I can do a little much-needed investigation work. I see there are no objections. Court is a... <laughs> Truly, there's no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the truth so effectively. A word to the wise. Underestimate the yun and they'll sweep your feet out from under you. In a way you never ever expected. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. What's he talking about? You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of the IV liquid. But there is no proof. There's no proof he didn't do it either. Yes, quite true. Huh? He's admitting it? Nor was this witness quite as decisive as I'd hoped. This I admit. After all, why linger in the past when the future holds so much? You... have something in mind, Prosecutor Gavin? Proof, Air Judge. I have another way to prove my case. With evidence, no less. Oh! What's this? He was the one who used the evidence! This is the victim Magnifi Grammarie's diary. Yup, yup. She didn't make the diary, she just made a page out yeah, of it. Yeah, she made a page out of it, which, if it's in there... Diary? That would be why Gavin's like, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my job after this. <laughs> so you think he is the one who forged evidence? Yeah. I oh. think he is. Phoenix Wright knows better until whenever the heck we had our abortion case. Um, I want to know that he also did this in the Trabian case. Where he's like, this bottle held the poison! And he's like, no, what are you talking about, man? That didn't have the poison. This had the poison. He did that to make him admit it, though. <laughs> That's still lying, though. That's still lying, but I mean, it worked. <laughs> it's, it's only a crime if you don't get away with it. <laughs> this sounds terrible. Don't ever put me in law. After going into the hospital, Magnify began writing his memoirs, it seems. The story of his birth, his startling debut, and of meeting his disciples. The story of his birth? He doesn't even remember his birth. I remember when I came out of the uterus. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no. There was an opening to a book. <laughs> That's a pretty weird book. It seems he intended for the last chapter to end quite appropriately with his death. Wait, that book doesn't say what the reason was, does it? The reason why his disciples couldn't refuse his last request? Sadly, it does not. What's important here is on the last page. Apparently the victim wrote in his journal that night, even after the IV had begun at 11 p.m. Let's read it, shall we? Come on, I want to see what it says. Tonight's IV is in, maybe the last. I leave the rest to them. The first should come soon, the journal may end here or it may go on. But not long, that depends on his hand. All that all that, All that is left to do, do is... is does to appear lay to be down this all that is pen. left is mine of mine is to lay down this pen or die i think the court accepts this into evidence magnifi's diary had so the the, there's a ripped out page which could be ours oh can we not actually read the diary there is something to examine okay. now we can read it this is the last page the diary ends here huh What's this? It looks like a page was ripped out? Well now, isn't that interesting? Read the very last part with particular care. That depends on his hand. The journal may end here or it may go on. That depends on his hand. Of course by his, he refers to our defendant, Zach Grammary. Um. That would make sense, there's yes. There's a two hit key. He was the first scheduled visitor after all. Oh. But look at what he said before that. This journal may end here, or it may go on. It may go on. Magnifi Grammary intended to write again. That is, if Zach Grammary didn't pull the trigger. Wow! You are pulling some serious nonsense here. I see the defense understands the meaning of this. <laughs> the victim's diary does not go on, it ends. Because Magnifi's life was brought to an end by the defendant, Zach Grammary. I honestly think that is what happened. You think Zack did kill the guy? I think he did. You don't think Zip Valent did it? <laughs> I, I kind of hope he did, but some of it is like, 
but why would Trucy now be living with Phoenix Wright? Mm. Like, if her father's a murderer, I don't think... She would want to, would, or I don't or think Phoenix people would've... would let her live with him. And that might be, I mean, if he's convicted, it might be that's why that that's happened. But... Order, order, order. Prosecutor Gavin, are you certain that Magnify Grammary wrote this? There is no mistaking his handwriting. Well, this does seem to be significant. According to this, Magnify did intend to continue his diary. Yet if his diary ended here, which plainly it did, then the one who pulled the trigger was the first visitor, Zack Grammary. Well, how do you like me now, Airwright? Still too green for your tastes, hmm? He's right about the diary being pretty clear. Still, I find it hard to believe that he'd overlook such an obvious problem with his precious evidence. Yeah. Well, Mr. Wright, the witness's testimony we heard was lacking, but to put together with this evidence, it seems quite sufficient for a case. If the diary's accepted like this, the trial's over. Hmm, maybe it's time for me to show them something. Show evidence, no need. Here's the thing, I don't want to show the evidence, I want to say, Hey yo, look at this, there's a torn piece! This, that bo- that, That's the biggest bother, cause like- That's the well, thing that bothers me. I'll get me. more into that in a little bit. I don't like anything about this situation, but the judge is already getting twitchy with his gavel. So I better show them something quick, or else. Oh, no way around it. I'm left with no choice but to show my own evidence. What? You have some evidence that overturns this diary? Hmm. It's not too late to rethink this and avoid more... embarrassment. Very well, please show us your evidence, Mr. Wright. Incidentally, don't even think of showing us this diary I've just shown the court. Now that we've come this far, I hope you have something a little more... decisive. Show us evidence that proves the victim continued writing his diary. Yeah. Alright, I'd be happy to. The decisive evidence proving that the diary didn't end with this page is... This is what really bothers me, because Gavin's like, Don't try showing this diary. Why can't we just be like, Um, no, you say this is decisive evidence. It clearly isn't, because there's a huge problem with it. Yeah, if this is the reason that we can't... Like, if this is the reason Phoenix Wright gets taken out of court, I'm going to be so mad. I'm, I'm sure it is. Hmm. This evidence, you're saying this is decisive? No, it's not. That's the point. <laughs> We don't need proof that he might have continued his diary. We need proof that he did continue that diary. If such a fiend exists, of course. Time to get cozy with the court record. I know I've got the evidence in here somewhere. Well, Marty's about to get really angry. <laughs> yeah. First... This is a terrible case. <laughs> this is terrible! Who, why, like, in a normal court system... I mean, I, I'm getting... It's not. This is not. But normally you could just be like, hey, look at this. Torn page. Just saying. Actually, no. In a normal court, if you're like, check out this piece of evidence you've never seen before, they'd be like, that wasn't registered as evidence. You can't present that. No, I'm saying you look at the diary that has now been registered as evidence and you say, hey. Yeah, I agree. But also oh Gavin's gosh. gouting us into doing this. Yeah. And Phoenix is a little overconfident and cocky in this case. Because yeah. he's, like, on the top of his game, basically. <laughs> Essentially. First, take a close look at this diary. Note that a page has clearly been ripped out. Which is what we need. What's this? How did nobody notice that? It's so obvious. It's I so hadn't obvious. noticed that at all. That's why we're still here talking about this. As it just so happens, I have here what I believe to be the missing page. What he believes to be the missing page. Alaka, I don't believe it. Not that he thinks... For sure it is the page. What he yeah. thinks to believe. That's very thinks different. Thinks to believe. <laughs> thinks to believe. It's hip to be square. Hip to be square. That's, that's what and makes me think. And the seagulls. <laughs> no, that was very different. <laughs> Looking at this page, it's hard to imagine that the first visitor that night shot Magnify Grammary. That's the defense's position. W wait, let me see that. Let's do some writing analysis. What in Sam Hill? Why, this is the continuation of the victim's diary. Supposedly. Is he trying to get us to be like, the evidence? Also, who gave us that evidence? That's the Trucy. other thing I'm trying to... Okay, but like, but Trucy was like, someone told me to give it to this dude. Yeah, we don't know that. Note the torn edge of the page. 
It's a perfect match with the torn remains of the last page in Magnify's diary. Quite... remarkable. Would you care to explain what all this means, heir attorney? The diary continued after his first visitor came. Which means that the victim was still alive after Zack Grammary left. Leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Valent Grammary. No. No! The handwriting, too, matches that on the other pages. This is without a doubt the genuine article. Wait, what if... What if she made more than one page? <laughs> she made what the What if whole she thing? made the entire thing? <laughs> and they were just like, we need an entire diary to show. <laughs> that also binds up with his handwriting. Or it's just Gavin no. like, oh, it totally does. No, like, we, they <laughs> can't test his handwriting now. He probably didn't write much. <laughs> he he never wrote. First thing he wrote was his last diary. <laughs> order, Except order, order. But, but wait, this is, th that's impossible. Uh, that old man couldn't have written that. He dies. Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you, Air Wright? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Air Judge? Y yes, Prosecutor Gavin? Might I request that we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. What?! But, but Prosecutor Gavin! This evidence overturns the current witnesses! I only ask to put it on hold. Please, my new witness has a very, very important piece of testimony to give. Five minutes, no more. I promise, Your Honor, you will make it to your spa appointment. <laughs> well, 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 if you put it that no way... way. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's your take on this? No. Well, Your Honor, judging from his enthusiasm, we'll have to hear this new testimony sooner or later anyway. So it might as well be sooner. Then, though this is highly, highly irregular, yep. we will put the current cross-examination on hold. The witness may step down. And then he runs. Now, Prosecutor Gavin, please bring the surprise witness to the courtroom. It's Emma Sky, who isn't a forensic scientist yet. I had a bad feeling just then. No, it wasn't. That ripped out page was too obvious. He must have known. And I should have known it was a bad sign all around. Is that Winston Payne? Hmm. No. Holding trial with no audience is a first, even for me, Prosecutor Gavin. Why? I beg the court's understanding. But I had to make a judiciary deal with the witness to secure his testimony. A judiciary deal? The details of his testimony may have some legal ramifications, shall we say? I thought it best not to, uh, to contain the information to this room. Hmm, very well, and you are the witness, I gather? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, sir. State your name and occupation for the record. Um, my name's Drew Misham. I'm a painter. A painter? And you are somehow related to this case? No, well, uh, not per se. I have one simple question for this witness. Mr. Misham, was it? Do you know what this is? Oh, yeah. I know it well. Oh, yeah, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of giving him the blue guy, <laughs> Owen Wilson voice from Ghost Trick. Uh, yeah. Well, how is that possible? That's fine. Have you seen this diary page somewhere before? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I made it. You... what? You made it? Yes. Uh, you might call it one of my works. The regional prosecutor's office received a tip-off yesterday. Illegal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Zach Grammary. Illegal evidence? Who gave it to him, though? I initiated an investigation and found this witness. A painter to the world at large, Drew Misham has another side, you might say. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. Forgeries, in other words. F forgeries w Well, so are we are to understand that this page here is... A fake, prepared by a certain defense attorney. Hold it! I didn't prepare this to evidence! Ah, the attorney speaks. 
Something about this page, I presume. But what is he saying? It makes no sense. After all, it was you who presented this evidence to us, Phoenix Wright. Wow, Javier, you were a butt. Witness? Er, uh, Mr. Misham, was it? Who requested this forgery? Who was your client? Oh. That? I don't know. What? Most of my clients prefer to remain anonymous, even to me. I make the items they want and receive my payment. That's the extent of my contact with them. Okay. Maybe we'll never know. B but there's no proof this is a fake. Okay, that's a terrible stance to take. <laughs> it's a fake. Huh? To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say without a doubt, this is mine. Oh my gosh. This is so dumb! If it's anonymous, then nobody actually knows. You shouldn't be stripped of your entire position for this. Mr. Wright, you have just presented illegal evidence to this court. My court. The judge cries. <laughs> <laughs> it was careless of me. That's all I can say. Oh, oh boy! Um, uh, here. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. The plot twist, Trucy's actually evil. <laughs> I mean, kind of. It, was it all wasn't a, her. It was all a trap. A fatal trap. I mean, she, if she had just, like, thrown it in the trash, she was like, whatever. Was <laughs> <laughs> <Foster> her nose on it. Illegal evidence. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Yes. Do you have an explanation for yourself? If I did, would the court hear it? Probably not. Forging evidence is a serious crime. And presenting it in court, a serious mistake. A fatal mistake for an attorney. Fatal too, perhaps, for your client, I fear. For your cell phone to be on. Tell me, what kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. Edgeworth. A guilty one! Your Honor, wait! I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime, but you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an individual. Wait. Come on, dude. Don't admit it. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. He's only admitting to presenting it. He didn't yeah, admit to, to forging it. it. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, another close call, I dare say. If the prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip, Everything would have gone the way you wanted it to, ya. Yeah. I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. I see no need for further discussion on this matter. Special witness dismissed. Dude, have you ever tried combing your hair? Uh, or the paint out of your hair, maybe? <laughs> Mr. Attorney? Yes? Could I... ask your name? Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright. I have seen and studied many people, but none like you. I'll remember you, Mr. Wright. Well, now you're dead, so you won't remember, but it's fine. Oh, he's back. For a sec, I thought there was an elephant. <laughs> Though I deeply regret to having to declare a verdict in this way, this trial is over. You have the right to find a new attorney and make an appeal. However, this court must... Ah, uh, your honor? Y yes, Mr. Zack? There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. It is impossible. What, is he gonna shoot up everybody? What is happening? I'm afraid the defendant is quite mistaken. I most certainly have the authority to de declare a verdict on you. Except, tell me, how do you plan on announcing your verdict when your defendant does not exist? Doesn't exist? What are you talking about? Oh my gosh, is he gonna be a I hologram? I am talking about this! Oh no, he's pulling but magic tricks! Mr. Enigma! He's pulling magic tricks to the get The defendant's out. escape! <laughs> Find him, quick! <laughs> Bailiff, close all exits from the building! Oh, On the sweet. double! He must not be allowed to escape! This is great. This is not the way to get out of court, but... That day, in that courtroom, a miracle occurred. The defendant, Shady Enigmar, a.k.a. Zach Grammary, did not just escape from court. He literally, unbelievably, vanished. Right before the bailiff's eyes. No one ever saw him again. Not since that day. 
this is the Grammarie Miracle. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad that that ended happily. <laughs> no, it didn't. No verdict was declared. Oh, so it was like an unsolved case. After all, the defendant didn't exist. That's how it happened. The trial of magician Zach Grammarie vanished along with him for all eternity. Okay. The mysteries that remained behind were all solved, however. But not until seven years later. Yeah, when some girl uh, passed out from almost atroconine poisoning. It was atroconine poisoning. But not, like, fatal atroconine poisoning. <laughs> I love how, like, in the span of five minutes, Marty went from, like, this is so bad, this is so stupid, to this is great. <laughs> I didn't go to this is great, I was like, I like his escape. <laughs> that yeah. was the one so, thing that made it good. The, I, so you can kind of see why this last case is polarizing. It's very polarizing, yeah. Okay. Some of it is just, this could easily be avoided if you were able to present the way that I wanted to, or that you wanted to. Right. But it does make sense narratively, though, because Phoenix doesn't yeah. know that it's forged, and he was being cocky throughout the trial. He was being cocky throughout the trial. Alright, and we're about to get to what might be the most polarizing part of the case, but in my opinion... And, and then and, she dies. No, hang on. In my opinion, and in Link's opinion, this next part is, like, the best part of the game. Okay. It's really good. It's really Very, good. It's, this is where the, also where the plot holes kind and of come in. And then all of a sudden... This is where the plot the, holes come in. She throws her hat off and then she becomes Zach Grammer. <laughs> that makes no sense. I know, I know. <laughs> you think I would be okay with a twist like that? Yeah, I, I know you <laughs> Anyhow, would. look forward to next episode. That's where things get really good. It's next investigation period. Okay. It's going to be great. Until we meet again, my friends. Oh. Have a great day and God an bless. investigation period. Yay. Yeah.